and this game is just about set to get underway. Yuri Lipa of Czechoslovakia is the referee. Bukharev and Kuzin of the Soviet Union are the linesmen. Byron Defoe in goal for Washington and Vladimir Mishkin in goal for Moscow Dynamo. The unit out there to start the game for Washington, Cicerelli, Ridley, and Miller. The puck goes back into the Washington zone. Veteran defenseman Rod Langway is back there in the corner battling with it. The puck goes loose. Moscow Dynamo attempting to center it and Defoe clears that one to the corner. The puck knocked out into the neutral zone. Knocked down there by Popehin. Popehin steps into the Washington player. Kali Johansson and it's brought back by the Soviets. Into the corner goes Semenov. He had difficulty centering it. It comes back to the point. Popahin keeps it in. Petrenko, back of the net. Scott Stevens knocks it away from him. And it comes out into the neutral zone and back into the Soviet end of the ring. Well, certainly Washington got into a shootout here the other night, winning 8-7 in overtime. It was very exciting for the fans, but I'm sure the coaching staff... as he went down to take that one away from a high-scoring winger on this Moscow Dynamo team. Capitals come back, pass to the right side, a little too far for May. Kolov, back in his own zone, big pass for Kovilyov, it slides to the goal mouth, poke check up, but right away by the ball. Kotelinov makes an attempt as he moved into the top of the circle. And his shot went wide, and the puck comes back into the Soviet zone. Some early pressure by Bosco Dynamo, and the young goaltender, the ball, has reacted. Oh, he was terrific. He's had to make two big saves. Two Soviet players have been in alone on him, and we've only played a minute and a half of the game. 
And this is the same trouble the Capitals had in game one here in Moscow, giving up too many chances, too many good chances. Trollov shoots it in. Scott Stevens lays it up on the wing to Kortnall. Kortnall lost control of it, and the Soviets take over in their own zone. 2.15 has been played in the opening period, and the pressure early has been applied by Moscow Dynamo. Loose puck in the Washington zone, and Jeff Kortnall gains control. He has been one of the best forwards for Washington throughout their tour, two games in Sweden and one in the Soviet Union. Dave Christian letting a shot go as he got into the bottom of the circle. And Mishkin stood his ground on the short side to make that save. Bill Holder brings it out for Washington. He flips it into the corner. Going back after it is Mikulchik. Mikulchik is hit in against the boards. The puck loose in the corner. Now back of the net. Babanka attempted to center it. It comes right to the side of the goal. And the Soviet defender almost had it knocked off his stick by an alert Dave Christian who was forechecking for Washington. Well, Pavanka walked in along the icing line and Michigan wouldn't leave the post. There's Brian Murray going into his ninth year as the coach of the Washington Capitals. And his unsuccess in the playoff is playoffs over the years has caused all kinds of rumors that he might have lost his job yet last year but David Pohl stuck with him and now Brian Murray is more interested this year in being the coach for the year than being the coach of the year. From the faceoff, the puck is picked up by Hyderov. Into the center ice area, backhand shot and a good save off Shamnoff. And Young Defoe has impressed with his early work in this game. He freezes the puck at the side of the net on a centering attempt by Moscow Dynamo. Well, Defoe was a second round draft pick. There's the coach of the Russian team, Vladimir Yurzinov, and he was a, uh, on two world championship teams. There's the chance by Defoe. But Michigan, as you can see, kept his left foot right against the post, and there was no room for Pavanka to put it in. And there's Brian Defoe, the second round pick from the Portland Winterhawks, who had an under three goals against average in junior hockey, and that's quite a feat. Penalty coming up to Moscow Dynamo as Dino Cicerelli was upended directly in front of the Washington bench. Cicerelli, Cicerelli did not play in the first game. 3.29 is the time gone by in a still scoreless first period. Washington on the power play, Udine in the penalty box for holding that penalty coming at 329 of this opening period. Scott Stevens looking for Mike Ridley in the neutral zone. He couldn't handle it. Now Miller picks it up and moves back of his own net. He leaves it there for Scott Stevens. Stevens on the right side for Felix. He shot it in, but it is broken up by the Soviets. They attempt to clear the zone. Felix kept it in. Miller gets it across to Cicerelli. Back to Ridley. Backhand shot. It goes wide. From the point, Stevens fakes a shot. Now lets it go. Knocked down in front of the net and dumped down the ice by Dmitry Frolov. Back comes Cicerelli. Cicerelli fakes the shot. Cross ice pass. And Kortnall couldn't pick it up. Into the neutral zone, Semenov, one of the stars of this Moscow Dynamo team, good speed, still controlling, hit front, shot at another big save by Defoe. He took that one away from Viktor Glushinov. This is the big line for Dynamo, and they showed you a little taste, they gave you a little taste of how they can play, and Defoe beat the Moscow forward again, and that's about the fourth big save for young Brian Defoe. 31 seconds still remaining in this Washington power play. Cardinal gets it back to the point. Hatcher with a shot. Locked. He gets it again. Hatcher moving in. Gives it to Cardinal. That was behind him. Cardinal is taken in against the board. Cicerelli trying to move out with the puck. He's checked. It's loose in the Soviet zone. Back to the point. Hatcher with a shot. Knocked down. Loose puck. 
The Soviets gain control and they bang at the length of the ice and that should kill off the penalty. Dino Cicerelli will really help the Washington power play. They were eighth in the league last year, although they scored 96 goals in the team record. Cicerelli, they put them over the 100 mark this year. The Capitals back at full strength. Krolov picks it up. He gets it into the slot area to Leonov. In front of the net, the goaltender to fall out of position. Another shot. A high drive, and that hit a couple of players in front of the goal. Leonov. The shot doesn't get through as it's blocked by Rod Langway. Back up Washington. Wickenheiser in across the line. He's checked. The puck is loose. Miller picks it up, but there's a penalty coming up here against the Washington Capitals. That comes at the 6.06 mark of this opening period. Miller going off for hooking. The Soviets will send out their top line of Yashin, Antipov, and Lomakin. Kolchik and Popahin are back on the blue line. This is Yashin. In across the line, he tried to center it, and it went off Pavanka out into the neutral zone. One common characteristic of every Soviet team is they can put five pretty talented people out there in the power play. And you just can't take a lot of penalties against any Soviet team, especially a pretty good one like the Moscow Dynamo. Mikulchik gives it to Yashin, back to Mikulchik. Yashin attempted to pick the defenseman up who was breaking in from the point, missed him with the pass. The Soviets throwing that puck around, action in front of the net. Yashin trying to take up position in front of that Washington goal. Neil Sheehy is trying to move him out of there. Here's an opportunity for the Soviet team as they try and bring it out front, but it's blocked again by the ball. Lamakin takes the shot, goes cross ice. Looking for Yashin, the pass didn't get there as it was deflected by Langway. McCulchuk with a blast. That is knocked down in front of the net. Sheehy tying up Lomakin, and that puck was driven right into him. Rod Langway has had the best training camp of any he's had while in Washington. So the coaching staff tells me 12th in all-star voting last year, which was a way low for Rod. I talked to Rod before the game, and he wants to give a belated birthday wish to his son Drew who is nine years old on September the 14th and Drew your dad told me he's got a nice present for you from over here in the Soviet Union but I can't tell you what it is <laughs> I think all of the players will be heading home with a variety of gifts and souvenirs from their trip to Sweden and the Soviet Union Puck comes back to the line to Fedotov Lushnikov to Semenov 25 seconds remaining in the penalty. Centering attempt and Defoe makes another save. Loose puck and the Soviets in the slot area couldn't get a stick on it. Hatcher knocks the man off the puck in behind the goal. It comes to the point to Glushnikov. The second off has shot the full way out of the net to make another save. Brian Defoe has been the star of the game. Look terrific. And there's the man of the hour if you're a Capitol fan. I said before the game that I didn't think the two kids, 118 and 119, could step into the National League and do a job. But we watched this fellow tonight, and maybe I was wrong. And the other young one who was the first draft pick, Olaf Kolzik, put on quite a show here in game one. Here's one of the, the stops that I've been talking about, and he's had at least a dozen shots, six of which have been great chances. Michael Pavonka got fooling around with the puck just inside the blue line when he could have iced it, and that caused the extra Soviet opportunity. Just three seconds remaining in the penalty. Puck comes up along the boards and out into the center ice area as Miller comes out of the box. So the Capitals are back at full strength. 8.15 gone in this still scoreless opening period. Langway racing back, and as he touches it, it's an icing call against Moscow Dynamo. The Moscow Dynamo finished fourth last year. There's Dino Cicerelli, and he's a great addition 
I think, for the Washington Capitals. He's one of the better scoring forwards in the league, a real opportunist. He's like a hawk around the net. He gets a stick on almost everything. He darts in and out. He's almost impossible to take out. He had 12 goals in his 11 games with the Capitals after joining him, being traded from Minnesota. And I think you'll see the Capital power play function a little better with Cicerelli. And they'll score a few more goals on garbage-type goals, which he specializes in. Pass over on the wing to Lenoff, back to the point. Long shot, save again by Defoe on that blast from the point. Cicerelli brings it back for the Capitals. Cicerelli, checked by Kovalyov as it's knocked down into the Soviet zone. Ridley for Miller to Cicerelli, back of the net. He's being harassed by Kateranov. Kateranov, one of the rugged defenders in Soviet hockey. A man who sometimes marches to his own drummer, and that's one of the problems they have had with him as far as the national team program is concerned. We have played 9.07 of the opening period at the Luzhniki Sports Palace. In the Soviet zone, quick shot by Pavanka. It did not get through, and the Soviets clear. Moscow Dynamo with a record of four wins, one loss, and a tie so far in league play. They are one of the top teams this year in Soviet hockey. And they will be touring the National League in late December and January, playing in Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Toronto, and New Jersey. Brought in across the line by Drews, it's offside. The Caps are really hoping that this kid Pavanka can play all year the way he played after he was recalled from Baltimore, where they sent him last year to play the first 31 games. He had 27 points in 52 games, and with the loss of Ben Gustafson, guys like Pavanka have to pick up the slack. And Brian Murray, who now is the most senior coach in the National League with the same team, with Glenn Sather retiring and Al Arbor taking the leave of absence before he returned. And that's a that's a real feat. As an old coach, I admire a coach who can hang on as long as Brian Murray. Not many do it, and he's a good one. Fired out of the zone by Holder. It slides all the way down the ice, and Michigan is forced to make the save. Michigan hasn't really been tested in that Soviet goal so far in the game in contrast to the number of shots faced by Defoe. Good hit at the blue line as Eugene steps into Dave Christian. Well, that was a good draft, a good body check by the draft pick of the Calgary Flames. He stopped Christian very quickly. Talking about draft picks, Tatarinov drafted by the Washington Capitals. He wears number two, Eudine number three for this Moscow Dynamo team. And 27 Seaman is the other dra NHL draft. He's drafted by the New Jersey Devils. Penalty is coming up against Alan May. He interfered, uh, gone with the uh, Moscow forward who was trying to get the shoot in. And interference is a call that the Nash in the National League and we'll have a look at it right here, that the National League, see how that number four is, Pozhekov, for being held up. But the referee, Lipa, who did a nice job last night, I thought, in Kiev, and let the teams play, thought he better get Alan May, the newly acquired capital from the L.A. Kings, who played very well in the first game here for the Caps, into the penalty box. So that kind of a penalty, not a not a good one, kind of a marginal one. They, for some reason, they always seem harder to kill off than the ones you get out of good aggressive play. We'll see if that's true in this case. That penalty comes at 10.37 of this opening period. No score in the game. The second power play for Moscow Dynamo. Washington had the first power play opportunity of the game. Broken up at the Washington line. This is Miller, weaving his way in, still controlling, taking time off that clock. Ridley is out there with him. He picks up the puck in back of the net. Ridley trying to tie it up along the boards. It's poked away from him, and there's a centering attempt by Dorothy that almost caught Michigan unaware. Michigan wants to stop shots only by the team in red, not the team in white, but he was alert. That guy must have done that once before in a game. Semenov dumps it in. Scott Stevens with a good hit as he dumped the Soviet player Semenov in the corner. Well, Scott Stevens is one of the best body checkers in the National League, and he really got a hold of that Russian forward. Usually the 
Guy he hits eyeballs don't stop turning till he lands on the ice. That was a, not an open ice check, which he is famous for, and I think any forward in the league will tell you Mr. Stevens is a tough guy to run into. Long shot from the point, steered to the corner by Defoe. 40 seconds remaining in the penalty. Cavaliov trying to center it. Dino Cicerelli gets a stick on it and hammers it out of the capital zone. 12.08, the time gone by in this still scoreless opening period. 24 seconds remaining in the penalty to Alan May. Good penalty killing by the Capitals, plus some fine goaltending by young Byron Defoe. Dumped down the ice again by Washington, and it's doubtful that Moscow Dynamo will get another opportunity on the power play. They can't seem to get the puck over the Washington blue line and control it. And on this big ice surface, killing penalties is more difficult than on the smaller ones in the National League. Washington back at full strength. At the point, Proloff with a shot. Knocked down in front, and back comes Washington. Led by Christian. Christian has Pabanka going in with him. But Christian was tied up by Tatarina and couldn't get the pass cross ice. This is the second game of the Soviet Union for the Washington Capitals. They won their first, beating Spartak by a score of 8-7 in overtime. Doug Wickenheiser with the winning goal. One of the rules in international hockey that is different from those of you accustomed to watching the National Hockey League is the delayed offside call. Thirteen twenty-eight has gone by in the period. Lead pass on the left side. Rouse takes his man in against the boards. Puck kick free. Picked up by the Soviets. Yashin got it back to the line. Yashin gets a return pass. He attempted to go cross ice. There seems to be a reluctance on the part of the Moscow Dynamo team to shoot when they're in that slot area. They seem to want to feed it off looking for the perfect play. They certainly do, and they've passed up opportunities to score, and that also is a characteristic of European teams that drives the North American coaches a little wild, because especially wrist shots, the Soviet hockey players all have pretty good wrist shots and can get the thing away quickly, but they don't like to do it very often. Fired in by Mike Miller. Puck is loose, back of the Soviet goal, played up along the boards, and they get it out of the zone and down the ice. Back after it is Bill Holder. 14-29 gone by in this opening period. It's scoreless here at the Luzhniki Sports Palace. Miller went into the corner and took Udine and heavily to the end boards. Udine didn't appreciate that one. way over too far and allows the pass. The goaltender is counting on the defenseman to not allow a late pass across. Then he can come out and cut the angle off. Defoe did come out and cut the angle off, and when the pass was completed, he couldn't get back in the net. And Hatcher, I'm sure, will hear from Brian Murray about staying in the middle a little longer than he did before making that emergency slide to try and intercept the pass. Alex Galchenuk getting the goal, and Heideroff should draw an assist on that Moscow Dynamo goal. At the 15-minute mark of the first period, Moscow Dynamo leads 
Hunter tried to center it, comes back to the line, and Felix gets a shot away right on. A centering attempt by May, he's taken in against the boards. Manages to keep it in. Cortnell runs into his man. Cortnell back of the net, trying to get it out front. Does slide it out into the slot area, nobody there, and Petrenko starts back. He has Dorothee with him. Puts on the brakes, looks for someone to pass to. He's taken in against the boards by Felix. The puck's still in that Washington zone. Now it's Dorothy bringing it out, and he has to take it back to his own line, waiting for his teammates to get onside. Semenov takes it off the boards in the Washington zone. He's checked. Lead pass for Cicerelli. He had a little trouble picking up on his skates. Leaves it there for Cortnell. With Ridley. Ridley moving into the slot area. Tried to go cross ice to Cicerelli. Intercepted by Semenov. And back comes... Lenoff. Lenoff is checked. Stevens taking it away from him. 16-13 gone by in this first period. Moscow Dynamo leading by a score of 1-0. Miller taken in against the end boards. Cicerelli trying to get it back to the point to Rouse. Missed him with the pass and it slides back into the Washington zone. You know, Cicerelli, one of the things that he can really do besides the obvious score is come up with the puck when he's fighting a guy for it along the boards. He's very strong on that stick and very quick on it. And he comes up with it nine times out of ten in the corner, often against a bigger player. Cicerelli and knocked him to the ice. Well, Ridley was caught for coming in and getting involved in a scuffle between Tatarinoff and, Cic and Cicerelli. Okay. And the referee was pretty lenient not giving the uh, Tatarinoff, the Russian defenseman, and Cicerelli roughing penalties because they both poked each other in the jaw. And the pop on the power play to Yashin. Yashin to the line looking for Lomakin. Lomakin controlling it. Lomakin back to the point. Mikulchik with a shot right on. The save is made by Defoe. And the puck moved ahead to Pavanka as he comes out with Dave Christian. Christian tried to get it back to Pavanka. He was tied up and spun around. It goes loose in the corner. But Pavanka will get it. His centering attempt knocked down by Mishkin. 110 remaining in the penalty to Ridley. 17-49 in the period. Yashin. At the line, leaves it there for Lomakin. Back to Yashin. Yashin to the point to Puppahin. Lomakin from the corner up. Beautiful play. Lomakin on the the pop. The the pop. A power play goal. This is two nothing for Dynamo. Well, Scott Stevens was beaten on a one on one as he walked out forward, walked out of the corner. That put, see, he's beaten right there. That puts three against the two. Here's another look. Watch Stevens get beaten here. He goes for the puck. A costly mistake by a very good defenseman off the Washington Capitals. A goal. There it is again. And you can see 
the 25, Anapoff was all alone on a smart play by Lomakin and not a great play by Scott Stevens. Richard, great big up at his own line for the Capitals. He attempts to work in across the Soviet line. He's checked and knocked down, and the puck comes out into the neutral zone. Langway fires it back in. It bounces off a Soviet player. The Capitals have to go back to their own line, attempting to reorganize. Callie Johansson in his own zone. Over to Rod Langway. Langway looking up into that slot area, trying to hit Richard. Broken up by the Soviets. Puck loose inside the Washington zone. Weak shot goes wide as we move into the final minute. Langway in control for the Caps. I don't think there's any question, Don, that the Washington Capitals have been badly outplayed and badly out-hustled this period by a spirited Moscow Dynamo team. The Moscow team has had the advantage of three penalties, two not very good ones. One of them cost them a goal. Loose puck in the Soviet zone. Hunter stepping into a check in the corner. Out to Cortinal, a delayed penalty call coming up against the Soviets at this 1932 mark of the opening period. Anatoly Simov is going to get a penalty for dragging Dale Hunter down as Hunter came across the offensive zone. And this will be a short power play to finish the first period. And I'm sure Brian Murray, you can see at the top of your screen there that Hunter was knocked down. And for that, the captain, Anatoly Simonov, will take a rest for part of this period and possibly part of the next. There's a contingent of about 200 Capitol fans that journeyed over to the Russian part of the tour. They didn't accompany the team to the initial stages of the training camp in Sweden, but they have been here in the Soviet Union. Kortnil with a shot from the top of the circle. Michigan makes the save. Kortnil gets it back, drops it back to Hatcher. Hatcher moving in, some action in front of that net. Centering a tip, and that net is knocked off its support. Yes, who? Dale Hunter. who plays with the Calgary Flames in attendance in the game and uh, they had a visit and a chat prior to the start of this contest. You won't see a bigger pileup than that at Joe Gibbs' Washington Redskins game. There's Hunter, a feisty little guy if there ever was one and a guy who doesn't care how big the opposition is. He goes after him. Let's have another look at it. Now Hunter's getting thrown around by number eight, Fushenov, and finally shoved into the net. The next thing you know, little Michigan, who's about the size of a good-sized hiccup, was on the bottom of a four-man pileup. There's Dale Hunter. Ten seconds remain in this opening period. Now here's a rule change. In the National League, when two players on each team gets a penalty, they're coincidental. Here, they must serve the time. So the Washington Capitals will have a four skater to three advantage for the remaining five seconds of this period. And then for quite a time in period number two. Ridley takes a big hit as he attempted to cut in front after the shot by Hatcher. And so the score at the end of the first period is Moscow Dynamo two, the Washington Capitals nothing. We now pause for a regional break. We are live at the Luzhniki Ice Palace in Moscow. Galchenyuk and Sinkov for Moscow Dynamo in the first period. The second question is with me in our first intermission. Dave, uh, your impressions of the game? Well, I think uh, they took the play to us a bit there. Uh, they're excellent. They're quick. Uh, they move the puck well, and as a result, uh, two power play goals. And uh, it's just uh, a matter of uh, uh, we've had tough starts in every game over here. We seem to be behind in every game. So we've got, a, we got uh, two periods left. We'll, we'll get back in there. This is a new year for you in terms of position. How do you like playing at center ice? Well, it's something that uh, Coach Murray and I talked about after last season and a bit before this training camp started. 
uh, whether I stay there or not uh, remains to be seen, but uh, I think uh, uh, through Sweden and, and now through the Soviet tour here, uh, I'm getting a chance to play some center ice and, and probably spend a lot of time there this season. Let's go back to 1980. I believe Herb Brooks is in the New York studio, and I'm sure he'd enjoy this nostalgia. February 22nd was the date. It was late in the first period, last minute, and uh, pick up the play with a uh, guy wearing your sweater shooting the puck in from center ice. Well, the puck uh, came out towards the neutral zone, kind of just over our blue line, and I turned with it. There was not much time left and thought, what the heck, I'll just uh, take a shot. And as a result, uh, Trechak uh, let the rebound play off his pads, and Mark Johnson was, was coming in and was able to pick it up and put it in the net with uh, you know, half a second left on the clock. Now that made it 2-2, and Mishkin, who's playing in this game against you, was put in at that point, and he originally only scored the goal, of course, to win it. 4-3, you went on to win the gold medal. Uh, do you relive that moment often? Well, actually, you really don't have much time. There's, uh, you have to think about the, the season at, at the present, and uh, that's for uh, you know, 50, 60 years old and sitting back and telling the grandkids about it. Glory days, I think Bruce Springsteen calls them. How about the team? How are, are the Capitals holding up? You played twice in Sweden, and now you're here. Uh, are the conditions difficult for you, or are you enjoying it? Well, I think everybody's uh, rather enjoying it. I think uh, Sweden was, uh, was excellent. The food was great. The accommodations were great. Uh, you know, it was a good, uh, a good experience for us. It's, it's certainly not uh, what we're accustomed to here. Uh, it, it's definitely not uh, as tough as we all thought it would be. Uh, the food's been uh, more than adequate, and uh, you know, the accommodations aren't. Uh, they're good for here, but they're not, you know, not first class uh, uh, as far as the U.S. goes. But uh, I think uh, everybody's been able to adapt, and it's not as tough as uh, we expected it to be. You've been away close to two weeks. Is there anybody back uh, home that you'd like to say hello to? Yeah, I'd like to say hello to Lisa, Michelle, Katie, Ryan, and both. All right, Dave, thank you for dropping by. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Dave Christian of the Washington Capitals. It's 2-0 Moscow Dynamo lead at the end of one period of play. You're watching the Superpower Faceoff on Sports Channel America. 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. Yes, this is Whitman. 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. Yes, four skaters to three for at least 132. Yeah. Hello, New York. When the second period starts, the Washington Capitals will be on a power play, four skaters against three. The Washington Capitals start the second period. Four skaters against three. Cicerelli moves into the face-off circle against Tatarinov to get this second period underway. The draw comes back into the Washington zone. The fans reacting, thinking that there should have been a penalty on CMAC, but the referee, Lippa, he waved his hand, indicating that he took a dive. You don't see this. At least not this signal from North American officials. Well, the officials in the National Hockey League are told not to wave penalties off. Here in uh, the Soviet Union, the fans don't boo. They whistle, and you've probably noticed that by now. And there weren't many not whistling when the referee didn't call a penalty there. Scott Stevens to Cicerelli. Cicerelli back to Stevens. He had difficulty taking that puck with him. Ridley picks it up in the corner. Back to the line. Shot deflects high off Johansson's stick. Still inside that Soviet zone. But now they pick an opening and dump it the length of the ice with 30 seconds remaining in the man advantage for Washington. The Capitals don't have much in the way of legs tonight, at least not so far. You wonder whether this trip, which started a long time ago in Sweden, is beginning to take its toll. This will be a longer road trip 
and they'll take it any time during the National League schedule. Brought out by the Soviets, Mikulczyk moving into the slot, takes a weak shot off a skate, it goes back of the Washington net. Now Felix picks it up, and the Soviets are back at even strength, four against four. Kortno fires it in for Washington. Pavanka plays it back to the line. Hatcher with a shot. That's wide of the Soviet net. 2 nothing. The Soviets lead. And now both teams are back at full strength. Both teams full strength. In the corner, Pavanka for Washington. Flips it up along the boards. Kortnall flips it down the ice. Uten goes back after it to touch it for an icing call against the Capitals. Well, the best player, as far as the Washington Capitals are concerned, in the three games that have been played already by them in training camp is Jeff Cortnell. He had a fine season last year, 42 goals and 80 points, 112 minutes in penalties, which you like to see a little feistiness on the behalf of those goal scorers. He's fourth. He was fourth last year, and this might come as a surprise to a lot of people who follow hockey, fourth in the voting as a left winger in the National League. And what a steal that was by David Coyle to sign him from the Edmonton Oilers who got him from the Boston Bruins. Flipped in by Pavanka. Mishkin stops it at the side of the net. Christian unable to pick it up in the corner and it's fired out by the Soviets. Moscow Dynamo leading by a score of 2-0. We've played two minutes and 30 seconds of the second period. Loose puck in the neutral zone, it comes back to Langway. Langway goes rink wide with it. Johansson moves it out to center ice, then the Soviets bring it back in. Uden moving in, a shot fired wide. Galchenuk gains control for Moscow Dynamo. Cross ice pass, they like to bring that man in from the blue line position, that time Uden looking for that cross ice pass. Well, it, the, the defensive winger or forward that's covering the point, it can't get caught watching the game and forget all about the fact that that point man may sneak off the point. 3.13 is the time gone by in the second period. Moscow Dynamo leads 2-0. Galtenchuk and Antipov with first period goals giving Moscow Dynamo a 2-0 lead over the Washington Capitals. Kept in by Sheehy as the Soviets tried to play it around the boards. Richard is checked. Wickenheiser back of the net tried to get out front and it deflects down the ice. Sheehy racing back after it. Semenov almost won that race for the puck. It's deflected up over the glass and out of play. Quite a novel addition to an arena here in Moscow. They have a sink between the two benches and you can see right in front of Don Beaupre who will be going in the nets pretty soon and on the left part of the sink you can see Washington with their bottled water and next year they're thinking of putting a toilet in there which will make it very convenient <laughs> for the players maybe a shower <laughs> this one with some hot water something we did not have for two days when we were in Kiev for the game between Sokol Kiev and the Calgary Flames won last night by a score of 5-2. You can see Defoe wears 60, and if it keeps going like it's going, that's going to be the number of shots he handles tonight. <laughs> I'm sure Brian Murray would like to leave the kid in there. He's been the star of the game for the Capitals, and he's the only reason the Capitals still have a chance in this game. From the faceoff, Hatcher checked in the boards by Linoff. Picked up now by Ridley. Ridley hits Cicerelli, breaking out of his own zone. He fakes the shot. Cicerelli drops it off. Holder driving in. He goes crashing into the net. And is the puck in there with him? No red light. The Washington players indicate they think the puck also went into the net. But the referee, Lippa, does not agree with them. Well, Lippa was in good position to make that call. And if the puck disappears, as far as the referee's concerned, it shouldn't count. And you can see that Michigan, who was bowled over, that's the second time goaltenders have been knocked down, at least he's been knocked down, and the puck, in the opinion of the referee, must have gone in, if it did, after the whistle. Mike Ridley was 15th in the National Hockey League in scoring and led his team with 89 points, led his team with a plus 17 tied for the leading hit with his team with 16 power play goals and was third in the National League and led his team in game-winning goals. 
11th in the All-Star voting. And boy, he had a fine year. What a steal that was by David Poyle to get he and Miller. And Miller seems to be able to be the, the steadying force on the line with Ridley. And Ridley, a Canadian boy who wasn't even drafted from your hometown there, Don, Winnipeg, walked into the Ranger camp and made it. But he's really made it here in Washington out of the University of Manitoba, and he has really blossomed in the National Hockey League since joining the Washington Capitals. 4.17 is the time gone by in the second period. Lomakin back in the net. Lomakin controlling. He's a national team member moving into the slot. Sean C. Rebound the score. Well, it looked like the Red Sea there. The Washington Capitals just disappeared. Lomakin, when he made the turn at the top of the zone, wanted to pass the puck. But everybody went to the guys he wanted to pass it to, so he walked right in. Look at this. And Bill Holder's got to come out and challenge the shooter. He was covering nobody there. You see number two and four. They both go. Hatcher runs to take the forward, and Holder stands there and takes no one. And Labakin gets not only one chance to score, Defoe, Defoe stops that, but before Holder gets involved at all, the rebound's in and the score's 3 nothing. And now it will be a definite uphill struggle for the Washington Capitals. They came back a number of times in their game against Spartak before finally winning 8-7 in overtime. It was a late goal by Spartak that forced the overtime period. But they are now facing a three-goal deficit. Johansson dumps it in. Back after it is Bojakov. The Capitals trying to center it. It does come out in front and then is taken to the boards by Galchenuk. And there's a whistle on the play and the penalty coming up against the Soviets. 5-10 is the time gone by in the second. As Shamanoff is in the box, will give them a chance to get a goal, and they need a lift. And sometimes a goal can do it for you. They get you back into the game mentally. They have not given much trouble to the Russian team offensively, and Michigan has been very idle, not having much to contend with. Hatcher in deep, having a little difficulty controlling it. Pavanka races back to the point to cover up, but he was unable to keep it in. And the Capitals have to move back into the neutral zone to try and set something up. Talked about Michigan not having much to contend with. His biggest problem has been players charging into him. Hunter in the first period and Holder in the second. Two of his bigger saves were on players and not the puck. Pavanka gets it back to the line to Hatcher. Hatcher takes the shot, deflects it. Ridley jamming away at it and Michigan covers up. Well, Ridley had a fairly decent chance as he redirected the shot from the point, but Michigan would not allow a rebound. And Ridley, who was all alone in front of the net, would have had a real chance to put it in. Here's the shot from the point. Now watch Ridley, number 17, in front of the net. He tips it once, but then he can't get a stick on the rebound, and a nice goaltending play by Michigan. It wasn't a great save, but it was an excellent cover-up. And there's the short little goalie. He's been such a star here in the Soviet Union. 34 years of age, and many believe that his better days are definitely behind him, but he has looked good tonight. Felix with a shot from the point. Big rebound. And it's fired wide by Cicerelli, and again, he has a player in there with him. That's about the third time he's lost his helmet. And that was Mark Hunter again in that... Moscow Dynamo gold crease colliding not, with Michigan. Not one of the Hunter boys from Petrolia. Watch 32 in front of the net here. He steps all over Michigan. And that's what Hunter does for you. He tries to do things that get you riled up. And you can see he's riled up the team in white, but he's attempting to rile up the team in red. And Michigan has had a tough day at directing traffic there. I'm sure he'd rather stop the saves. Dale Hunter, a leader extraordinaire and by National League standards. And the toughest guy in the Hunter family is his father, who taught all his boys to be tough. And his father is here watching yes. the game tonight. His father's a delightful guy. He said he came to Russia. Cicerelli scores! And it was 
was Hunter who was responsible for that as the pass came across to Cicerelli and he made no mistake in beating Michigan and that's a power play goal at 6.06. Well, Dale Hunter makes the play here, but watch how quickly Cicerelli gets the shot away. Good goal scorers get those kind of goals. That wasn't much of a shot, but it was in the right spot and that's what Cicerelli can do and he's apt to get 40 or 50 especially playing as much as he's going to play on the power play with the Washington Capitals. Some people will tell you, some goalies will tell you that when Cicerelli shoots it, the puck has eyes, finds a way to get in. And you talked about what Hunter was contributing to the Washington Capitals in this game. He was not only upsetting some of the Soviet players, but he also got his own teammates going and draws the assist on the Cicerelli goal, a goal, a power play tally. Centering pass, slides back to the blue line. Kept in there by Mikulchik. Now knocked away by the Capitals. Ridley brings it out. Ridley, a pass in the wing. Another shot by Cicerelli. That one is deflected high up into the crowd. And again, more pushing and shoving in front of that Soviet goal. Well, this has turned into a bit of an ugly scene. And the fans here, although fighting is frowned upon in international hockey, Don, seem to be enjoying this, do they not? Yes, they are, and uh, the well, one battle taking place to the left on Michigan, and both players have dropped their gloves. And rarely do you see Europeans get this far into a fight, more often than not the shoving match, and the Russian player thinks it's foggy here in this rink as the sweater is pulled over his head. And that's Scott Stevens. And Scott Stevens, boy, guys get out of his way when he's walking down the street, let alone the hockey rink. Now well, the fans are booing now, but they liked it when it was going on. And that will mean a junction for Scott Stevens and the Soviet player because fighting is banned under international hockey rules. Now the Washington Capitol fans in attendance may have enjoyed that. The Soviet fans are cheering, they're whistling. And, of course, it was a couple of years ago in Czechoslovakia where that famous brawl took place between Canada and the Soviet Union at the World Junior Championships. This one developed in front of the net after a stoppage in play. Ridley was in front of the goal. Stevens is not there yet, but he arrives in ill humor. And there's Scott Stevens wandering in, wondering what's going on. And it'll be interesting to see how the referee calls this one. Sometimes you see pushing and shoving in international hockey and punches being thrown with the gloves on. Rarely do you see two players drop the gloves and go at it the way these two did. And Scott Stevens landed some pretty good punches. But so far, the players have gone to the penalty box area. Now Stevens is coming out. But I think Stevens and the Soviet player are both out of the game. And Stevens is still talking to the Soviet player. But now he is heading for the dressing room and the Soviet player will be going off as well. At least we think he'll be going off. It's Mikulchik, who Stevens was involved with. Pavonka, who can speak Czechoslovakian obviously, is over there discussing the situation with the referee who's a Czechoslovakian. Stevens was a little upset because he thought the Russian player was not going to be ejected as he is. But they're both going for an early shower. And the fans are quite upset at Stevens. I don't know what kind of a reaction their own player is going to get here. The coach, Chuck, they cheer him. So, ah, the fans are no different here than anywhere else. There's a villain and there's a hero. The heroes tonight are in white in this building. That outburst comes at 6.34 of the second period. As I said earlier, under international rules, players 
are ejected from the game. They draw five-minute majors for fighting, but they're also finished for the night. And that, I think, is what the referee, Yuri Lipa, is explaining over at the penalty box area. Well, he may have given uh, other penalties. There were other players involved. Uh, the stars of the uh, contest, of course, were the two players that fought. But there could be other penalties assessed here. Because that scene developed long before Stevens wandered in off the point to take over as the heavyweight. Rod Langway, who hasn't played this period, the, the Capitals dressed eight defensemen, but they only play six a period. And this was the period Rod Langway was going to sit out, but no longer as Scott Stevens' history. Both Scott Stevens and Oleg Mikilchuk draw game misconduct in addition to the five-minute majors. Ridley has also gone to the penalty box for Washington. Well, Ridley and another Soviet player that we can't identify yet, I think will get penalties for starting the scuffle, although they never did fight. And it appears to be Shamnoff in the penalty box for the Soviet Union. Well, I'm sure they have to send somebody to serve the five minutes for the two players that were ejected. Lomakin has gone over, and he now is in the penalty box. Well, most people are confused, including us here. The, Czech, uh, the Soviet players are very unsure of what happens, but... I think there's going to be another one to go in for Washington. So the referee obviously gave two players roughing penalties and two players fighting majors. And game misconducts. And the game misconducts. Foul roughing minors to Washington's number 17, Mike Ridley, and the Amos. There's Bravanka, the official Andre interpreter for Rod Langway, the captain Amos of the Capitals. Double roughing minors assessed against Ridley and Lomakin. That in addition to the five minute majors that were given to Scott Stevens and number 16, Oleg Mikulchik. Now since coincidental penalties are not in vogue in international hockey, both teams are gonna be playing two men short, two skaters short for two minutes as well as one skater short each for five minutes. So on this big ice surface, it's gonna be like playing on the Moscow River for these two teams with only three skaters and a goalie in action. Well, the big ice surface certainly puts a demand on skating skill. Five minute majors and double minors assessed as a result of that altercation. Three skaters against three. Pavanka is out there. He has Langway with him, back of the net. The veteran Washington defenseman starts out over on the right side for Hatcher. Hatcher winds up his shot just wide. And that deflects up over the glass and out of play. Well, in this situation where one forward and two defensemen play with each team, the way you can create a little offense is have one of your defensemen jump into the rush. And Hatcher is the guy of the two Washington players who'll do it. He scored 12 goals last year, or 13 goals and 27 assists. So he knows where the net is, and Langway only got two. So I think Langway will anchor, and Hatcher will be the rabbit on this play. Pavanka battling along the boards. It's knocked away from him by Galchenchuk. He circles to get away. He's upset at the referee. Let me indicate another dive on the part of the Soviet player. And that's the reason for all the cheering and the whistling here in the Lushniki Sports Palace. On the right side for Pavanka. Pavanka backhander off the side of the net. Boshikov plays it up on the right side for Galchenchuk. Galchenchuk taken in against the boards by Hatcher. Cicerelli races after the loose puck. He scored the lone Washington goal. That goal coming on the power play with Dale Hunter drawing the assist. This is Cicerelli's first preseason game. He was out with a hip injury and he draws a penalty. He and Tony Tanney with the Vancouver Canucks are among the better players at drawing penalties. And if that's a stat, the teams keep. And you'd see Cicerelli right at the top of the list. 
He has a little Hollywood in him. And in this play right here, there was no Hollywood in that one. He was clotheslined from behind by number 19, Fedotov. And now they'll get into the delayed penalty situation. As, of course, you can't penalize a team below three skaters. 41 seconds remaining in the first minor penalty against Ridley and Lomaka. That, in addition to the five-minute major, still 341 in the majors that were given to Scott Stevens and McCulchuk. Well, the Capitals in 41 seconds are going to get a four-skater against three advantage for a minute and 19 seconds. And this is a good opportunity for them to get back in the hockey game. Ever since they scored that goal, every capital has been a little more involved in this game. And Dale Hunter was the guy that started it by running into Michigan and then got the nice assist on Cicerelli's goal. From the face off, the puck is loose and it's brought up by Lenoff. Lenoff in across the line. Taken off the puck by Rouse. And the Capitals gain control. The Capitals now have two forwards and one defenseman with Christian who has played lots of defense in his career. But you can see that Brian Murray's looking to take advantage offensively of this situation. In 16 seconds, he's gonna have a power play. Kelly Miller stops, gives it to Rouse. Rouse in across the line, over to Christian. Christian takes a shot, it goes off a leg, bounces back to the neutral zone. Christian has it again for the Capitals. He's being chased back into his own zone. The puck knocked off his stick. The foe comes out to play it ahead to Miller. Miller being watched by Tatarinov. I was mistaken there, Don. The, the two extra players got four minutes each, but they can only put two on the penalty clock. So now it's kicked into the second two minutes, but that means the third Russian penalty won't start for another two minutes. Christian, centering pass for Miller. He couldn't get a stick on it as he was checked by Voshakov. Now it's Rouse playing it off the boards for Christian. Christian flipped it down into the Soviet zone. Frolov fires it out. On the left side, Brandikov back to looking for Frolov. Takes the shot just wide. It looked as though he was going to pass it across to the defender who had gone in deep. Cortno comes back for Washington. Hatcher made a nice play on that two-on-one. You remember he was taking advantage of one early. He wouldn't allow the pass across. Defoe cheated on the shooter and made the shooter shoot it wide. Rolled off. Goes down as he's checked in the neutral zone. And this will be a high sticking call against the Washington Capitals. Cicerelli or Hatcher, I think, is going to get it. I think it's number four, Hatcher. And this game has degenerated into, and there's the penalty call right there, or there. Take your choice. Either one of those is a penalty in the National League or in international play. And here it's coming up again, number four, Hatcher. Cicerelli also tripped his man. And Washington's lost their cool a little bit, I think. Antipop was the player hit initially by Hatcher, and I think we're now going to get a goaltending change as Byron Defoe comes off to the Washington bench, and he did a fine job in that first period. Had it not been for some outstanding work by Defoe, it could easily have been three or even four nothing for Moscow Dynamo. So Don Beaupre comes in to take over as we are at the 940 mark of this second period. And Ryan Murray said that he wanted to split the goaltending chores. It appears as though Vladimir Yerzhinov of the Moscow Dynamo team is going to stay with Michigan, although Michigan has been taking quite a physical beating in this hockey game. Well, Don Beaupre is the number one goaltender in the minds of the Capitol Brass now. And he has had some great years in Minnesota, but lately, in the last two or three has struggled by comparison. Glushenkov wasn't in position at the blue line to take that pass. Now he does get it ahead. Send it off. Score! Well, Rod Langway, the captain for the Capitals, was a little soft on Semenov, and Semenov outbattled him and got in alone on Beaupre. Now the goaltender goes in, he doesn't get any warm-up, and we've seen that three times on this tour where the goaltender's first shot when he comes off the bench goes in. And Rod Langway rarely gets beaten like that in National League play, but I suppose you could say 
that even Betty Crocker burns the odd kick up. Seven off makes it a 4-1 game in favor of Bosco Dynamo over the Washington Capitals. Seven off with the fourth goal of the game. Drews on the left side for Langway. Langway with a long shot, steered back to the boards. Callie Johansson manages to keep it in. Semenov picks it up in the corner. He's bodied in against the board, so he leaves it there. Prolov brings it up, drops it off to Semenov. The Soviets like these drop passes, as a matter of fact, in a game the other night in Leningrad. That Calgary won by a score of 4-2 over Himmick. I think that Himmick team may have set a world record for drop passes. Holder looking to the blue line for Wickenheiser, broken up by the Soviets. They come back. Picked up now by Yashin. Yashin trying to pick that far corner, just fired it wide. Pavanka gets it out into the neutral zone. He was looking for... Gala Johansson, who was breaking out with him, but the Soviets were able to break it up. Ahead to Pavanka. Pavanka going in. Had difficulty controlling it. Bozhikov recovered just in time. Now Holder coming in from the point. Unable to take the shot. There's a penalty coming up against the Soviets. Going off will be Udin. That comes with 11.24 gone by in the second period. For Illinois at 11.24. Well, I thought it was Udin going off, but apparently that took place before Udin collided again with Pavanka, and Pavanko gets an elbowing call. Well, he came in late. You were right in the call. The referee didn't call the penalty to the Soviet defenseman, but he did call when Pavanka came in late and knocked the player down. They're still playing. Three skaters against three. Langway having some problems trying to pick it up. Forced back into his own zone by... Paterinov, now it's four against three in favor of Moscow Dynamo. Fired down the ice by Langway. It'll be four against three power play for the Soviet team for 40 more seconds. Simak gets it back to the line. Paterinov goes cross ice to Frolov. Back to Paterinov, a shot. That is deflected up against the glass. Beaupre got a piece of it. Kept in by Frolov. Over to Tatarinov, moving in, makes the shot, back to Frolov, makes the shot at the side of the net, now back to Tatarinov, moving in, he bounces the shot. Well, they made a lot of passes, and they got it to the man they wanted, but he wouldn't shoot it. Tatarinov shoots it this time, Beaupre makes the save. Tatarinov gets it again. Tatarinov with another shot, right on. As one of the people on Washington players is on the ice, Tatarinov cross ice. That was a great pass by Tatarinov. He's a Washington draft pick and has played very well tonight. He faked the shot, then slid it over to number 27. C-Mac, watch him, right over there. He fakes the shot, then slides it over to C-Mac. C-Mac's on the wrong wing, and Beaupre simply can't get across fast enough. Washington had a chance to ice it, but couldn't. A nice play by this young defenseman who may someday be wearing the red, white, and blue of the Washington Capitals. Here's what Beaupre saw, and you can see the problem. He's ready to pluck that shot, but he can't get over to take that one. Well, Tatarinov had let go a couple of shots from that position as he moved into the top of the circle. That time he faked the shot and made that beautiful pass, and they'd like to work that play with the winger coming in on the back side, and that time the defenseman Tatarinov got it over to him perfectly. And that's the third power play goal for this Moscow team. And I said earlier, it's death to take unnecessary penalties against the Soviet team. Their power plays are all good. Petrenko moved into the slot, looking to pass it off, and it was broken up by Washington, and the puck has flipped over the glass and out of play. We're at the 13.06 mark of the second period. Good, that 
That was good. That's Yuri Leonoff taping his stick, and you can see the curvature on that stick would be illegal by National League standards, but not by international play. Something else the Soviets do, Harry, they like to, as you mentioned on a previous telecast, shave down the front end of that stick. So the tip of the blade is a lot narrower than the rest of the blade. It makes for a better feel, and you're looking at the sweat dropping off the nose of Rod Langway who's one of the few players to do not wear helmets in the National League. And in the Soviet Union, the gold judges wear referee's shirts. And you can see that that's another difference between the National League. Can you imagine the gold judge trying to get a back to the dressing room if he wore a referee's shirt in the National League rink? There are times when they prefer to operate under a veil of anonymity. You're not kidding. Delayed penalty call coming up against the Soviets. Beaupre heading to the bench, but it will all go for naught as that puck is touched by Uden. So trailing 5-1, the Capitals will now have a power play. That's a slashing call and one behind the play. And the teams have got a little nasty here. This is supposed to be the Friendship Series as it's named, but it hasn't been very friendly out there on the rink tonight. Hyderov going off to the penalty box, and that comes at 13.31 of the second period. Moscow Dynamo leading by a score of 5-1. The lone goal for the Washington Capitals, Dino Cicerelli from Dale Hunter, a power play at 6.06. Well, they have another chance here to chip away at this lead. They have about six and a half minutes left in period two. They're down by four. They certainly need a couple before they go in for the second in intermission. A high sticking call against Hyderoff. Ridley in the faceoff circle gets the draw for Cicerelli. Cicerelli lets the shot go. It's high over top of the net. That's a little faceoff play that a lot of teams use. The center just tries to kick the draw back slightly behind him, and then he takes the defensive center out. And the winger on his off wing, in that case Cicerelli, comes in behind, picks the puck up, and gets some time for a shot. And Cicerelli missed the net. The center on the play was Ridley, and the shooter was Cicerelli. Hatcher in across the line over to Cicerelli. Tried to return it to Miller, who was breaking for the net along with Hatcher, but the pass never got through. Ridley gets it back to the point for Hatcher. To Ridley. Ridley back to Hatcher, Hatcher moving in, lets the shot go, it's wide. On the other point, Johansson fires it back to the net, Cicerelli has it. Cicerelli gets it over to Ridley. Ridley looking initially for Johansson who was racing in from the point, he was covered, the pass didn't come through as initially was planned. Now it's broken up by the Soviets, they bring it out into the center ice area. Antipov was looking for Yashin. Knocked down by Johansson. Over to Miller. Miller to Pavanka. Back to Miller. Mike Miller dumps it in to Pavanka. Back of the net for Cicerelli. He's fed it out front. And there's going to be a penalty here as the Washington player Miller went flying into the Soviet net. And I think it is Miller who is going to be going off. I think it's Papahan who's going to get the penalty. He nearly killed Miller running him into the net from behind as Mike Miller was trying to get some position for a goal. And the Soviet defenseman showed no mercy whatsoever and ran him right, right into Michigan, who's now handled four flying red shirts. The toughest guy in the ice, maybe, the little goalie Michigan. <laughs> now this gives the, the Washington Capitals 31 seconds, five skaters to three. And the way the coach is thinking here and trying to get his players to think, let's get a goal in the 31 seconds, and that will still give us a minute and a half, one man up, and we can get out of this situation only two goals down if we play it right. 
There's Murray, and he's a very vocal coach. But all this yelling, Mr. Murray, my friend, in this country probably won't do you any good at all. I think he's objecting to the fact that the faceoff yes. is taking place outside the blue line. That's exactly what he's asking. And Brian Murray has the reputation in the National League of being a bit of a referee baiter. But that's the competitive nature in him. He has 325 wins in his career, third among the active coaches in the National League today. And as you mentioned earlier, he is the oldest coach in terms of continuous service in the National Hockey League. Christian keeps it in. At the side of the net, Paterina for Moscow Dynamo, knocking it out into the neutral zone. Five against three for another five seconds. Beaupre pounding the ice, indicating to Hatcher that one of the penalized players is ready to return. That will be Hyderov. Hyderov picking up that puck, taking the lead pass. Hyderov with a shot right on. Beaupre loves it and flips it back of the net for Christian. Well, Washington just can't seem to get into sync tonight. They've taken some unnecessary penalties. They're being outskated, although not nearly as badly this period as the first. And to be down 5-1 in a game that your legs feel like they're on upside down, it's a pretty tall mountain to climb. This fellow Hunter tried to get him involved and did, but the Washington Capitals have played a lot better than this in their first three games. And here's the chance here. It was easily handled by Beaupre, who looked sharp. They scored on him right away, but he had no chance on that one, and he had no chance on the power play cross ice pass, and has had to make three or four big saves. And he's the guy the Capitals have penciled in as the number one goalie today. Yashin. Steals the puck in the Washington zone. It's bumped by Ridley. Now Kelly Miller circles back into his own zone. Lead pass for Ridley. Ridley was tied up. Managed to get it over on the wing to Miller. Miller bumped in the corner by Lomakin. The puck loose in the Soviet zone. 30 seconds remaining in the power play. Holder gets it cross ice. Felix with a shot. Score! Now, I don't know whether Dino Cicerelli got a stick on that one because Chris Felix, who hasn't played much tonight, let a nice, hard, low shot go that got through. And if Cicerelli didn't tip it, he may have caused Michigan to play the tip. But watch it right here. I don't think he did tip it. It looks like it went straight in right along the ice but take a look at the traffic jam in front of the net and Kelly Miller nope nobody touched it although I think Michigan was playing the tip and when it went straight in he was fooled there's a nice replay right there Cicerelli tried to tip it and jumped high like he did tip it hopes that maybe the score would give him the goal well, they have announced on the public address system that Cicerelli scored the goal with Felix drawing the assist. It's a power play goal, regardless of who scored, and it makes it 5-2, Moscow Dynamo leading. But Cicerelli will get a pot full of goals, just like that one. He can get his stick on everything. He's got great hand-eye coordination as well as a great shot. Three minutes remaining in the period. The Soviets to the attack. Shot off the side of the net. Hydroff bumped in behind the goal. Neil Shi has lost his stick. Trying to play the puck along the boards. Unable to get it out as Udine kept it in. Hydroff circling in the corner. Getting away from Wickenheiser. Hydroff on his back. And he's upset. There's a penalty coming up against Washington. And that comes at the 17.25 mark of the second period. Washington trailing 5-2. With about two minutes and 35 seconds left, he played for four teams last year, Don. The New York Rangers, the Baltimore team in the American League, Team Canada, and he played some games late in the season for Washington. So uh, you talk about our road trip. He must have made some beauties playing for those four teams. He was switching uniforms rather frequently last year. Centering pass broken up by Hatcher. Comes back to the point, now over to Lenoff, he couldn't get a shot away. 
Let off. Goes back of the net. The valley off. Seamack back to the point. Seamack has it. Back to the line. Long shot right on the rebound. Beaupre attempted to reach up and grab it, but Hatcher was there and he fired at the length of the ice. Beaupre made a great stop on uh, Yuri Leonoff on a rebound. It was cleared down the ice by the Washington Capitals. And the Washington Capitals goaltenders have been strong tonight, both of them. Seamack attempted to center it. It went off a skate, and Pavanka cleared the zone. Tatarina off to Frolov. Tatarina, long lead pass. Petrenko steered it down into the corner, comes back to the point. Tatarina trying to keep it in. Dave Christian got it over to Pavanka. He gets it out of the zone. 18.50 is the time gone by in this second period. Here's an opportunity for Semenov. He couldn't control it. Petrenko now. One minute remaining in the second. Semenov back to the point. Tatarinov with a shot. High to the Okay, oh, got a piece of it, but not enough. You think the Washington Capitol Green Trust and Kraft and Tatarinov are impressed with his play in this hockey game? Well, he only played four games last year due to a knee injury and a little bit of a discipline problem. But here's a 50-footer that Beaupre saw all the way. He just couldn't handle it. And Beaupre, who has got a great glove hand, usually eats these up. But this was a hard shot, and you can see the time he had to set it up. And Beaupre stopped it, but it rolled the wrong way after it rolled out of his glove. And that is the fourth power play goal for the Moscow Dynamo. And they are making Washington pay for their sins as far as penalties are concerned. 53 seconds remaining in the second period, and it's 6-2, Moscow Dynamo leading. And last night in the game in Kiev, Dmitry Kristich, who's also a draft pick of the Washington Capitals, played a very strong game. So they have two fine prospects playing here in the Soviet Union. I guess the question is, can they get them out? Cardinal with a drop pass, looking for Hunter, knocked away from him. Kelly Johansson races in from the point, centers it. Alan May couldn't get a shot away. Johansson trying to center again. He's battling in the corner with Yashin. 30 seconds remaining in the period. Lomakin circles in the neutral zone over to Yashin. He slides it across to Andapov. He couldn't do anything with it. Now the Soviets knock it in. Yashin racing into the corner. He dodges a check from Hunter. Then he's sent flying by Langley. And I think this is going to produce another penalty against the Washington Capitals. Well, Langway, who's got one of the most controlled tempers in the National League, very rarely gets upset. And you can see that uh, he took his frustrations out on the Soviet player and fired him into the glass. Of course, we all know Rod Langway was a top linebacker when he attended the University of New Hampshire and he gave a little demonstration of a forearm shiver right there. So the captain of the Washington Capitals will spend the rest of this period, which is only five seconds in the penalty box and the Soviet Moscow Dynamo team get a chance to get their fifth power play goal. But you can't afford to take penalties, as you have pointed out, against a Soviet team, particularly one that has been in training since the 1st of July and has already played six league games for the Washington Capitals. This is only their second week of training and only their fourth preseason game. And that's a tremendous advantage for the Soviet teams in this tour. And so the score at the end of the second period is Moscow Dynamo 6, the Washington Capitals 2, we now pause for a regional break. Well, there were a lot of penalties in that second period, 16 in total, eight to each side, including a fighting major to Scott Stevens of the Capitals and Oleg Mikacek of the Moscow Dynamo team, and both also, as a result of that action, picked up game for the Moscow Dynamo squad, and they start the third period with 155 still remaining in the penalty to Rod Langway. Well, the Washington penalty killing 
which last year was 11th, has not been very effective tonight, although it's a much tougher chore against a team that practices on the big ice. There's a lot more territory for the four penalty killers to cover than in the National League rinks, and it is causing troubles for the Washington Capitals. Seminoff, in across the line, still controlling it. Seminoff now checked by Hatcher, and Wickenheiser gets an opening and fires at the length of the ice. In the Washington zone, Pavanka attempting to clear. It hit a player, goes back of the net. Garafiv unable to do anything with it, and it's fired the length of the ice by the Capitals with 54 seconds left in the penalty to Langway. Semenov leaves it there for Glushnikov. Ahead to Lenoff. Lenoff in across the line with Dorofiev. He was checked and the puck comes back out into the neutral zone. Tatarinov in across the line. Moving into the slot area. Shoot saved by Beaupre. Beaupre took over from Byron Defoe midway through the period. Another shot from the point and the save is made by Beaupre. He stood his ground with action taking place in front of him. Thirteen seconds remaining in the penalty. Back to Froloff at the point. Froloff attempted to slide it in, broken up by Pavanka. He didn't see Wickenheiser breaking out into that neutral zone, and as a result, didn't get a pass through to him. Well, Washington weathered this penalty storm, and Beaupre had to make one big save, so that was a good job by the penalty killers. We're at the 2.03 mark of the third period. 6-2. Moscow Dynamo leads the Washington Capitals and a good check there by Langway as he took Lenoff up against the boards. A reminder that tomorrow the second superpower face-off continues on Sports Channel. We take you behind the Iron Curtain for a high-powered matchup between the Soviet Wings and the Calgary Flames. Sports Channel puts you at center eyes for the exciting game between the NHL and the Soviet Union. Gear up for the hockey season when Calgary battles the Soviet Wings at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, tomorrow, exclusively on Sports Channel. Yashin leaves it there for Lomakin with a shot, just missing the far corner. And the puck ricochets off the boards back to the neutral zone. The Soviets much more adept at utilizing all of the playing surface than the Washington Capitals. They get those wingers really spread out wide. I'd like to see an NHL team play the whole year on a big rink like this. I think you'd see that after 20 or 30 games that they would be doing that. But it's not easy to come over here and play in a rink that's 200 by 100 instead of 200 by 85, which most of the NHL rinks are. Ridley has it knocked away from him by Atipov. Felix goes back after it. It was his shot from the point. That was deflected by Cicerelli for the second goal scored by the Washington Capitals. Both goals by Cicerelli. The other feature of these rinks, the net is out about four feet longer from the end of the rink than it is in the North American rinks, and the rinks are very square. So it's a long way from the front of the net to the corner, and if you get out that far, it's a long way home if you happen to be beaten. And Scott Stevens went too far out, as you recall, on a goal in the first period, then he had to pack a lunch to get back in front of the net, and he didn't make it in time. There's the Washington bench, and there's Michigan, who's had a relatively easy time of it tonight in goal for the Soviet Union, Moscow Dynamo. Rouse manages to keep it in. Galchenuk, back of the net. He's checked. Uden trying to get it out. He can against Richard. Drews. Trying to play it back to the point to Rouse. Hyderoff bumping with him. Rouse managed to keep it in. Mike Miller getting set. Takes the shot. Glove saved by Yashin. He picked that one out of the low corner with Wickenheiser looking for a rebound at 344 of the third. In this hockey game by the Washington Capitals, both goals on the power play, both scored by Dino Cicerelli. Face off to the left of Michigan. 
A shot from the faceoff by Wickenheiser, a quick release, and Michigan reacted to that one. This line of Wickenheiser, Richard, and Miller did not play much in the first two periods, and this is a good opportunity for them to show Coach Murray something. Semenov attempted to throw it out the short side, but there was nobody in position. This is a favorite play of many Soviet teams. In other words, when a player is going around the net with the puck, instead of getting around the whole way, he'll throw it back just before he goes behind the net. It's a tough play for the goalie and a tough read for the defenseman. Semenov has to take the puck back to his own zone as Dorofiev was hit along the boards by May and tied up just inside the blue line. Here comes Semenov. Semenov trying to go around Felix, a backhand shot. That just missed the far corner. Semenov takes a hit from Cicerelli. Puck loose, comes outside the line. Petrenko now, break wide. The Capitals making changes. Frolov back in his own zone to Lenov. Cmac. Chase back behind his own net. The Capitals, Cortinal trying to apply some pressure. Hunter gets it out, back to the line. A shot by Holder, deflects wide. Out in front, nobody in position as it goes off the skate. And back comes Lenov. Lenov has Cmac with him. Play broken up by Cortinal. He gets it ahead to May. May over to Hatcher, in across the line. Cortinal back to Hunter with a shot. That hit a player in front. Hunter trying to dig it out. He's sent flying. And back comes Tatarinov for Moscow Dynamo. Tatarinov, quick wrist shot up high on Beaupre, similar to the shot that beat him for a goal late in that second period. Lomakin. And to Pop to Yashin. Yashin trying to get around Hatcher. Hatcher managed to knock him off the puck. Bavanka, behind his own net, being watched there by Lomakin. Lead pass for Dave Christian. Christian gets it back to Pavanka. Pavanka spun around by Lomakin, manages to carry on, takes the shot, and Christian just failed to deflect that. Holder unable to keep it in. And the ball, racing in. Again, Sheehy is shot. Saved by Beaupre, and he covers up on the rebound. We played 6.27 of the third. Moscow Dynamo leads 6-2. He puts any more weight on the Soviet Bell phone company. He's going to give him his own area code. <laughs> Even with his own area code, he'd have trouble making a call here in the Soviet Union. One of the problems many have encountered attempting to send messages back home, waiting many hours for that phone call to be placed. In some cases couple of days. It's a long time. It's a long time to sit in the phone booth, isn't it, Don? <laughs> Sheehy stopped at the line. Galchenuk moves it out of the zone. Sheehy has it again. His pass broken up. Galchenuk comes back. Galchenuk can't do anything with it as the Washington Capitals clear the zone. Ridley stepped into a Soviet player, and there's going to be a penalty coming up against Washington. I think it's Ridley who's going to be going off. Well, Ridley does not take many penalties during the season, but he's taken a couple tonight, and quite a few of the Washington players have been a little out of character tonight. And the frustration of this long trip, plus being down 6-2, to two, you can see number 26 is still smarting. Shamanoff. Ridley gave him a little taste of the hickory there. We'd like to recognize the about 200 fans. That comes at the 714 mark of this third period with the Moscow Dynamo squad leading by a score of 6-2. And they now have another power play opportunity. They have produced four power play goals. Well, there you can see the trainer talking to the Russian player who held his hand after taking a flash from Mike Ridley. And he appears that he's going to get over it. And he'll probably be back in action before this power play is over. 
Petranko. And across the line, lost control of it. Wickenheiser battling in back of the goal. Comes loose to Holder. And finally, the Capitals get it out. Feathertop circling as the Soviets weave in that neutral zone, looking to spring a man loose. Here they go with Dorothy. Into the post and lands there in the square. Well, Bo Prey was a little fortunate on that one. He got a little bit of the puck, but he had no idea where it was. It trickled behind him, but went off the post. Kelly Miller. Manages to gain control, trying to move into the slot area for a shot. Back and they're high over top of the net. A lot of hard work there by Kelly Miller to get into position to take a shot. There's a penalty coming up against the Soviets. Number eight, Gushin, and off is going to get a penalty for upsetting Kelly Miller in front of the goal. It would be called interference or holding. That comes at 8.24 with 49 seconds remaining in the penalty to Ridley. So the Capitals will get a power play for a minute and 11 seconds in 49 seconds. They're trailing 6-2. And you can see there's the stop that happened on the previous rush that uh, we talked about Beaupre getting a bit of it and then getting a break as it rolled off the post. And I would have to say that the Soviet... Moscow Dynamo are in uh, have fully earned their 6-2 lead at this point in the hockey game. Proloff over to Tatarinov. He was looking for C-Mac. The pass was just a little too far for him. Hatcher has it back in his own zone. For Pavanka. Pavanka gets it over to Cicerelli. Cicerelli tried to return it to Pavanka and it went off Tatarinov to the corner. Now Lenoff. Trying to move out is checked by Cicerelli. The Washington Capitals taking a glance at that clock to see how much time is remaining in the penalty. They are at something of a disadvantage here in the Luzhniki Sports Palace in that the clock does not hang from center ice. The clock and the scoreboard are at the east end of the building. And also it takes a little getting used to. We've mentioned before, but we should again. The clock goes backwards compared to the ones in North America where they tell you how much time is left. This one tells you how much time they've gone. And so as a player looks up, sometimes he can be confused. You can see that there is not 8.59 left in this game. They played 8.59 of the third period. And there are some who would like to see that type of clock used in the National Hockey League. I'm not one of them, but I suppose there are arguments for it, but it has about as much chance of happening as the Toronto Maple Leafs winning the Stanley Cup this year. Obviously, it is not going to happen. <laughs> so the Washington Capitals will now have 106 remaining on the power play as we have hit the 917 mark of this third period. The Capitals, after this game, Fly off to Riga, they play Dynamo Riga on Tuesday, and they wind up their friendship tour of the Soviet Union against SKA Leningrad on Thursday. And they've been advised not to drink the water in Leningrad. Well, we've been to Leningrad, and uh, I'm happy to say that that part of the trip was behind us. The, the, the stay in Kiev was terrific, and we're looking forward to our four days in Moscow. Felix, cross eyes to Holder, he drives it in. Hunter picking it up off the boards for Cortno. Cortno moving into the slot. The shot is blocked. Loose puck into battle for it. Antipov gains control and he gets it out of the zone. Now it's Mark Hunter. Unable to control it and it's fired down the ice by the Soviets. 30 seconds remaining in the penalty. Felix for Washington. It was his good point shot that resulted in the second Washington goal tipped in by Cicerelli. Cortnell leaves it in the corner for Felix. Felix back to Cortnell. Cross ice for Christian. Good play by Washington, but the pass intercepted by Hydra. Hydra to Butnikov. 
He tried to get it back to Hatharoff, and it was a high pass that he couldn't pick up. Cortnell with a long shot right on. The penalty is over. Bosco Dynamo back at full strength. Chenkov looking cross eyes for Voshikov. Shot goes wide. In the corner, Sheehy trying to clear the zone for the Capitals. We're at 10.48 of this third period. Dynamo leading by a score of 6-2. It was 2-0 for Moscow Dynamo after the first period, and they outscored the Capitals 4-2 in the second. Semenov leaves it there for Dorothy. Dorothy cross eyes pass. And Petrenko couldn't convert it. He was tied up. What a nice defensive play by Mike Miller, who back-checked very hard to take the Soviet player out of the play just as the pass was coming across. And I'm sure the Capitol coaching staff noticed that play by Mike Miller, who's known way more for his offensive skills than his defensive skills. Richard back into his own zone to pick up the loose puck for Washington. For Mike Miller, he drives it in deep. Wickenheiser off the end boards, lets the shot go, and Mishkin had to react quickly to that one. Petrenko drops it off for Dorofiev. His shot went off a stick, picked up by Richard, and he fires it back into the Soviet zone. We're at the 12-minute mark of the third period. Here's Kelly Miller with a shot, doesn't get through. He gets the rebound and just fired it wide. Cicerelli gaining control along the boards. Cicerelli being watched closely by Tatarinov. Cicerelli goes down. The puck is loose. Ridley racing into the corner after it. Ridley looking for someone to pass to. Tried to get it in front for Cicerelli. Intercepted by Frolov and he cleared the zone. Well, you know, the question everyone's asking is, will this tour... And I'll continue in a minute. Lenoff going in. Bolpre went to the corner with him. Forced... Let off to make the first move, and he didn't even get a shot away. No, it was a nice play by Beaupre. He didn't have to make the save, but he took the scoring alley away. Just get this time, he scores. Let off to Simak, and Simak gets the goal. Boy, that was a nice shot. He got it away on stride, meaning he shot the puck without coasting. His legs were moving as he was starting outside the Washington defenseman, Bill Holder, and let the shot go quickly, low to the far side, and beat Beaupre on it. This is a masterful goal right here. It looks like it should be an easy stop, but you can see it was a perfect shot. Beaupre may not have had the angle cut down like he wanted, because this player is at a fair angle. But it was a good shot, and as I look at it again, Beaupre thought he was in the right position and didn't move, but he wasn't. And that happens to goaltenders early in the season. They have a groove they have to get into as well as the skaters. And you know, everyone's going to be asking, will this type of training camp situation for Calgary to Washington help them get ready for the NHL season? We will never know. If they get off to a slow start, they're going to say, no, it caused the problem. If they get off to a fast start, they are going to credit the tour. So we shall never know whether this is a good idea or a bad, unless possibly they both get off to slow start. I know if you ask the coaches, they may not say publicly, but they'll say privately, this is a stinking way to run a training camp. What the coaches have complained about both Terry Crisp of the Calgary Flames and Brian Murray of the Washington Capitals is that they don't get the time to work with the team because of the traveling that's involved and many of the social activities that the team is expected to participate in while they're in the Soviet Union. Well, C-Max goal, his second of the hockey game for a 7-2 lead as we take a look at the Soviet coach, Yurzanov. He is the head coach of Moscow Dynamo this year, he has only been in the job for three months. He previously was with Dynamo Riga. Brian Murray wants to know if the clock can go any faster. He's not enjoying this performance by his team. And even though it's preseason and there are other things coaches are worried about than winning, once the game starts, they want to win it like any other game. Yashin circles back to the line. Gives it to Froloff. On the right side for Yashin, Holder gets there first. 
13-24 gone by in the third. 7-2, Moscow Dynamo leading the Washington Capitals. This will be the first loss for the Capitals after three wins. They won two preseason games in Sweden and their first here in the Soviet Union by a score of 8-7 in overtime. Frolov with a shot, knocked down in front. Antipov moving back to the line. To Lamacca now, Lamacca moving in. Couldn't get around Holder. Slaps it to the other corner, too far for Yashin. And the Capitals get it out of the zone. Antipov going back after it, playing it up on the right side, dumped in by the Soviets. I'm not sure what the crowd is chanting, Harry, but I think they want more. I think they do. Galtzenchuk, leaving it there for Shamnov. Slides it to the side of the net, then he bumps with Rod Langway. Puck brought back by Sheehy. Long lead pass, intercepted by the Soviets. Frolov, rink wide for Hyderov. Dodges one check. Gets it over on the wing for Galtchenchuk. Galtchenuk spun around. Tried to hit Shamanov. It was broken up by Sheehy. The puck is loose in that Washington zone. Sheehy gets it out of there. Corto gets it cross ice to May. He couldn't get a shot away. Fans reacting, thinking that Portnell should have had a penalty as he upset a Soviet player directly in front of the Moscow Dynamo bench. Felix moves it out of his own zone. Frolov, waiting for his teammates to get back on side, plays it to the blue line to Voshikov. Now it's Dorofeev. Dorofeev working his way in. Can't get away from Rouse. The two of them go down in the corner. Rouse still battling with Dorofeev. Flips it to the other side to Felix. We're at 15.40 of the third. 7-2 is the score. Moscow Dynamo leading. Benetov, lost control of it. Felix with a quick shot, another shot. The rebound, that goes up high. Felix with a good move. He came racing in from the point to take that pass. And Meshkin had to react quickly to that one. Cicerelli in the corner. Taken in against the boards. Ridley comes in to help out. Semenov trying to tie him up. Ridley still battling. Unable to get it over to Cicerelli, but it comes around the boards to Rouse. Back of the net for Cicerelli, out front. And the two players in front of the net, Ridley and Miller, were tied up, couldn't get a shot away. Dorofeev controlling it inside the Washington zone. Good move to get around Felix. Dorofeev leaves it there for Simak. Back to the point. Shot by Proloff is blocked by Richard, and he gets it out of the zone. One thing you've noticed is that the Soviet team are smaller than the Washington team, but for the size of the Soviet players, they're very strong. A lot of the forwards are under 180 pounds, but in most collisions or battles for the puck, they're pretty tough to move off it. Of course, they're in great shape, and they've had two months to Washington's eight or ten days to get ready for this tour. I don't want to use that as an excuse for a rather poor performance by Washington, but it is a factor. And the Washington coaching staff... The fans thought the puck was in the net, but it hit the post and Lenoff flips it down the ice. But some fine moves by the Soviet team and they are dipsy doodling when they come in across the line and throwing that puck around very well. Tatarinov makes the shot. Now he lets it go, and it bounces off Cicerelli, or uh, Hunter, I should say, out into the neutral zone. Now it's Lenov looking for Kovailov. He was tied up and couldn't deflect that centering pass. Back comes May, firing it in. And as it's touched by the Soviet player, there's an icing call and some more pushing and shoving back in that Soviet zone. 17.58 gone by here in the third. He's going to hand as he came off because changing the goalie, it makes no sense whatsoever. 
for the goalie going in or the goalie coming out. But a little page out of the basketball where you take your star off when you know the game's won so he can enjoy the applause from the fans, and Michigan got a deserved hand, although he had a very easy night. Antipov brings it up ice for Moscow Dynamo. Good move. Tried to get around Langway. Couldn't. Centering attempt by Yashin. They're unable to clear the zone. Puck goes back of the Washington net. Langway finds an opening. He fires at the length of the ice. As I was saying when I uh, was talking through that breakaway by the Soviet player, the Washington coaching staff have to get this team in shape for the season. And as you mentioned, with this social uh, schedule they've got, Little tough, but there's the shot by Felix. And the tours of all the sites. The coach has to burn the players on the off days or they won't be ready to play the season. So winning the game is one of the objectives, but getting your team ready to start the season is the main one in training camp. Into the final 30 seconds of the period, Yudin with a shot from the point. That's gloved and held by Beaupre. 27 seconds, the time remaining in the hockey game. Well, the main difference in this game although the Soviets have outplayed the Capitals, is that four power play goals against you. You rarely win a game when that happens. Shamnoff trying to fire it out that short side. He was checked by Hatcher. The puck does come loose. And the penalty is over, and so is the hockey game. So the final score. Moscow Dynamo 7, the Washington Capitals 2. We now pause for a regional break.